Hi guys, I'm back. So, I was, um, like I promised, I was going to uh, show you about something about uh, shading. And I'm going to do it um, the really easy way. Because I don't want you guys to be um, too, uh, too impressed. <laughs> okay. Um, as you can see here, I have a, um, let me see if I can put it a, a little closer. Didn't ask my husband to do the, um, to do the, uh, stand. I'll do that another day. So here we have a circle, which should be representing a ball. Uh, let me zoom out just a little bit. Yeah, I think if I keep it on here, that'll work. Okay. So... When you're thinking about shading something, what you have to do is think of an imaginary light source. So let's say our light source is up here. This is the sun. And of course, you don't have to draw a sun, but just, just think of the sun is up here. Now, when the sun shines on an object that is three-dimensional, it will cast the shadow so what you do is think that this is the Sun like that so the shadow would be about here right that's the shadow because the Sun is shining down there and it's blocked so that's the where the shadow is so then you'd start off with shading the shadow like that. Now, another thing is that how higher your light source is, the shorter your shadow would be. So if this light source were up here, if this was our sun, we would have this as a shadow, right? And you'd see something in front of here. So that would be your shadow. See, do I have something like a? Yes, I do. So we'll put this one away for a little bit. See how the sun comes down? So this is blocking it, so that's why you have a shadow underneath. Now, when you start to shadow the object, you have to keep on thinking about your light source. So pick one. You can have two. You, know, you can have two light sources, but let's just make it easy and do the one light source. So then, most of the light would shine on here, and if this light source was way in the back, this side would also be shadowed, right? But because it's a round ball, you would have more shadow on this, on the bottom, like that. And that's when you have something, I don't know how you call this in English, but we call it a dusela. And that's how you can, you know, sort of merge it into the shape. So that's when you're little shadow starts light and gets darker like that and then you use your little doozle thing <laughs> now that's all you really have to know about shadowing because it's not that difficult so with this little it's just a bunch of paper rolled up, but and every time it gets really dirty and doesn't do its thing, you can just cut some off here. Now, if you take it a step further, and you can, because of the light, you'll have the darkest shadow will be closest to the object, and that's the same for um, for the object itself. So. Here will be the darkest part of the object, and here will be the darkest part of your shadow. 
And you can go on and on and on with this. And the more you do this, the realistic it gets. Like right now, you can see it's really an object with the shadow. And now I'm telling you that, you know, just for the purpose of showing you this outline here is pretty thick, but you don't want an outline like this. You want it to, you know, sort of fade in into the paper. Now, if we do another one, and this time, let's say here's the sun. So the sun will shine down here. Our shadow will be something like this. And I'm saying that the light source is sort of on the same um, depth as the ball is, because if it was further back, you'll have the shadow more like this. See that? And if it's more in front, the shadow would be more like that. You just have to think of, um, of shadows and you have to think about the time of day because 12 o'clock, your light source is up. So you have shadow like that. Then if it's in front of us, the shadow will be at the back. Uh, if the light source is behind us, the shadow will be there like that. If it's way back there, the shadow would be like that. Are you getting the getting the thing I'm trying to get across? Okie dokie. Now, you can take this a, l a lot further. Because if you have a light source, like say up here, and you want to make this really realistic, then you go on with your shadowing as much as you want. But then also you want some um, uh, highlighted areas. So with something round, it'd be something like this. That's what you usually see. And then you come in with your eraser and you have, sometimes you have really small pencil erasers. I have one somewhere, but can't find it. Then you whiten, you lighten that up so that you have like, now I'm outlining it so you can see it, but you have like this uh, highlighted area that gives you a sense of that's where the light bounces off of it. <coughs> of course, this one doesn't work with this shadow because we have the light source behind it. So the highlight would be somewhere on the back of this uh, ball and we wouldn't see it. But I'm just saying that the light source is now here. Forget this shadow. It's coming down here. Here's your highlight. And the shadow would be something like that. And that's really all that it's to it with the shadowing and with other things. Now, if you have something that we tried to do in the um, the uh, the video, Gerda Lis Lipsky, like she had these big flowers. So if you want a flower to come up off the canvas, you have to pick your light source and you have to make the shadow come under the leaves like that. Shadow here. And the, the funny thing is that, you know, you don't really have to really use it as a science because all you really want to do is just give a little bit of an illusion of uh, shadow being brought up from under the flower. Let's say this is the center of the flower and we'll give it another few petals like that. You would just bring the shadow in here. And when you do that, you'll see that it just lifts off uh, from the canvas. Now, um, I don't, I don't want to go any further because if you do this and you start to doodle on a little, I don't know, um, sketch block, and you'll see that you, you just keep on getting better and better and better. And at first, maybe you want to place a little circle for your light source sometimes. But later on, you won't even have to do that because you'll just know where to put those shadows. And even if you wanted to make this lo look like it was a little bit round, you just put like, see how, how now it's getting pulled up from the paper.
it just like it's come rising up. That's that's how you do it. That's really all there is to it. Now I was um, planning on uh, playing with uh, some new paint. I've been planning on that for a long time. So I'm just going to wet this paper. This is um, a watercolor paper. And I haven't really tried this. Let's see how that works. Ooh, that is cool stuff. As you can see, how much pigment is in there. That is cool. Oh, you could do tons of beautiful backgrounds with this. Now I'm hoping I have something that looks like green. Oh, yes, I have. And give it a little bit more here. Look at it go. I love that. That is beautiful. This is fun stuff. This is almost like, um, <laughs> like pouring paint. I like the vibrancy of those colors, but never be too happy until you've seen them dry. So I'm going to leave a little bit in between here. Let that go. Wow. Look at that go. That is unbelievable. There are tricks to make um, normal watercolor move like that. But this does it uh, just all by itself. That is pretty cool. Here and there I like leaving a little bit of white so that you can see that it's um, doing something all by itself. Ooh, I don't like that little drop there. Just giving it a little bit more water so it can move. And that's what I'm going to do down here. I'm giving it a lot of water. I've had this paint for a long time, and um, the thing is that I just don't have time to use it all. So I'm glad I got some time now, today. So going for another color, oops, that is kind of pretty. That really works. Doesn't it? Now someone said that this is uh, like um, the Ecolina, but it isn't because this is really highly pigmented watercolor, but fluid. So I'm going to put a little here. Let it come down here. And then come back in with the green. Let it do its thing. What I really like is all these kinds of blues. Blues and greens make me think of beautiful oceans, beautiful islands. And we could even use this for a background for some uh, hand lettering. And there's a little bit of white that I don't like. There you go. I really like uh, the way this this pulls into it. 
I think that's very pretty. Maybe we need a darker color. That's pretty. see it up close. That's really pretty for our backgrounds. I don't want to let that go down there a little bit. Let this dry. And I'm going to see what this color is. See, if you make your paper wet, then that's the boundary you're laying down for this uh, watercolor. Look at it go. Wow, that is so pretty. Let me try to get you in close so you can see that. See that spread? That is beautiful. Now I want to come in with that green. I think I'll get some more of these colors. I'm looking for that really pretty turquoisey. I don't know if, if it's this one. No, it's not. Turquoisey, where are you? Here you are. And if you give it more moisture, you can make it move more. See that? Hope you're seeing it. Let's see. Let me check. No, you can't see it, what I'm doing. There you go. Now there are ways to make your uh, watercolors um, move like this. There's uh, one uh, very um, well-known artist on Instagram, and she does a lot of um, uh, marine animals, and she uses salt water, and that will help you help the paint spread. But you'll have to uh, live near the ocean or make your own with some of those uh, sea uh, salt chunks. It's kind of nice. Got to fill in the gaps there. I really like how it spreads like that. Now, what you usually would want to do is uh, let this dry first. Let's see if we can do that a little bit faster. I think that's pretty much dry. Oh, and I got all resin on me. Ugh. That's the only thing I hate about resin, all these sticky stuff. Everything's sticky now. Okay, where's my brush? Uh-oh. Now, on top of this one, I would like a little green because this is all blue. And we're gonna get the green. That's 
that. Try it down here. And then we can see if it if it turns. Um, sometimes when you do the watercolor and you come back in with water, you will see, like you're seeing it now, it will lighten up a little because the uh, it takes the paint out of the uh, paper again. And then you have to be really careful because you will um, keep seeing it. Sometimes it's the effect you want because right now I really like what it's doing. As you can see, this was uh, kept dry. Can you even see what I'm showing you? Yeah. This one was kept dry. And then when you make this wet again, you get these lines, which are really beautiful. But if you like them, it is a lot of work because in between you have to let that dry. Let me see if I can show it a little bit better. Like when you come in here, Can you see it? And what you can do when you have these puddles, you put little chunks of sea salt on it, and then you'll see that it pulls it all together. And I don't have any sea salt here. I do have some soda, but let me check. No, no sea salt. Let me see if my soda works. Now, putting, as you can see, it pulls, pulls all the, the moisture to it. And then what you do, you wait till it's totally dry and then you can brush it off and then it leaves really beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, marks. So um, I guess this is a uh, pretty good paint. I like it has a lot of possibilities and I'll show you up close how pretty it is see that that is really pretty I like it see that's where I made it wet again here right there and let's see if I can do this looking on the screen. See how the out outlines of the wet, wet <laughs> little piece of um, where I made it wet, the outlines are sort of, let's see if I can get it, yeah, there you go. They get darker, that's what you're going for. That is pretty. I wish I could just put it in some sort of a stand. Let me check. Let us see if we can do this. There you go. Whoops. Okay, I'll have to hold you guys. And come in with the turquoise. And the brush. Now, if you want something that to make, will make you totally zen, this is it. Because uh, just, you know, covering a piece of um, watercolor paper with this, this makes you zen. Take another color. Let's get some green on there again. I'm gonna order more of this. I don't even know where I ordered it. I think uh, Giastaka. 
I could buy this for my shop too. This is a Vallejo, by the way. That I can't do anything with because it's still wet. You have to leave that on there. Let's do something over here. Now, if you make this wet again, what you do have to do is um, change your water often. And bring it over here. That again. Oh, that that bit here is beautiful. Let's see if I can show it to you. Can you see that? Wow, that is beautiful. And of course, this has no limitations in the uh, size that you want to do, because this watercolor paper comes in very big sizes. They even have it on on a roll, so you could really, really do a lot with this. Now I'm making it wet again to give it another um, dark rim. It'll give a dark, but this is where it gets, you know, you, do, you don't want to really disrupt the whole pattern. So you have to be really careful with your little brush. You put in the water here like that. And as you can see, the, the paper's lightening up again. But that's because you're making it wet and the color is trying to go to the sides. So that's going to give some pretty, pretty patterns. But you have to have a lot of patience because in between you have to let, let, these, um, let these pieces dry completely and then you can go on again. But I love this one. Wow. I've been looking for something like this for pretty long. You know, something that... You can just pop on there. That isn't too expensive because these bottles are not expensive at all. They come in, um, let's see how much, 32 milliliters. That's about an ounce. Here it is. Paleo, liquid watercolor. And they have, I don't know, I think about 40 or 50 colors. But I just went for the blues and the greens, so um, because I know I, I'll, I'll use those. I'm going to make something out of this piece. Let me get you out of here. Put that back. I'm going to make something out of this bit. This is beautiful. I'm going to let it dry. I might even put a little doodle over it. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys, I got a new silicone um, mold. See that? And there's some resin in there, what was just left over from my last painting. So we're going to let that dry and see how they pop out. I hope they come out really smooth. Then I'll use the bigger ones. I've got some fire, fire glitter in there. Okay, guys, Ooh, there's our painting drying. Beautiful cells. Okay, guys, gotta go. That's the resin piece drying. Okay, see you all because the next video is gonna be tomorrow. So, thank you all for watching. Bye bye.